from the MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas, extracting the signal from the noise. It's The Cube, covering Splunk.com 2015. Brought to you by Splunk. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Rick. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in the MGM Grand for Splunk.com for 2015. Day two coverage, live coverage all day. Um, 17 interviews yesterday, we got another 17 today. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Frick here. Jeff, great day. Uh, yesterday, I got day two coverage. It's all about the cloud today and security. Yesterday, great event, a lot of customers on board. IT, IT ops is a big topic. Their big announcement, ITSI, what's your take? You know, it's fun to hear the hall chatter at breakfast this morning. One of the great comments I heard is that uh, Splunk customers want them to be a security company. <laughs> For all the other stuff that they're doing, um, they want them to be a security company. It's interesting listening to the earnings call with Godfrey really talked about. Splunk's got the opportunity to be this data platform. And then as people have the data platform in place and they buy more and more capacity, John, then what they can do is add different applications. So whether it comes in, as IT, whether it comes in as security, you know, there is a really great uh, land and expand opportunity for Splunk, but you know, a lot of really enthusiastic uh, customers. Great party last night, Godfrey was out pressing flesh. I tweeted a couple pictures of him spending time with customers. You know, there's just a good vibe in this company. They're in a growth mode, a hyper growth mode. They're putting the throttle down and uh, it's fun to be here. Yeah, I mean, the thing that I noticed yesterday, my big walk away um, in talking to all the guests that came on theCUBE was, a couple of highlights for me. One is they are moving into that new territory of analytics. And business analytics is now the new market opportunity for Splunk. They're building on their foundation of the old days of the just boring log files. They bring a great solution to that. That's how the company got started. And every year they keep listening to customers and they keep bringing new products and keep moving into new territory, kind of up the food chain, if you will, to the much, most, most pressing uh, business issues around business analytics. The second observation was, they're still a product company, and we're going to talk with um, Guido Schroeder, uh, SVP of products. They're still a product company, and that's a good sign. That means they still got a lot of life left in them, they got a lot of growth, new products will, will continue to power uh, Splunk as a company, so that's one real major positive thing. And finally, the ecosystem I find really fascinating. I was with EMC last night, talking with uh, Jay Cuthrell, who's over there at VCE, a lot of changes happening at EMC, and, and you're going to see AMC and the big companies like Cisco we, we had on yesterday, really, really partner with Splunk. The partnering equation with Splunk is significantly high. In, th in these cases, these are big whales. Yet Cisco's got 50,000 customers on UCS. Um, they, uh, Splunk has about 10,000. That's a huge delta between the two, so I think that's going to be great uh, news for Splunk. Great upsell, net contract value for existing stall base, plus new market opportunities in adjacent markets. EMC. What a great opportunity for EMC to partner with Splunk. And the list goes on and on. Palo Alto Networks, huge ecosystem behind us. And again, finally, Internet of Things, Jeff, is really, really a big thing. And the new skill sets in, in Internet of Things really revolves around an IT mindset. Being creative, getting those new solutions out there. Having the kind of full stack developer mindset. Having an IT ops perspective. This is the new normal in IT, and Splunk is certainly well positioned for that. So, you know, I'm, really bullish on Splunk. I mean, they're, they're, they're the company that keeps executing. You know, every year we hear, oh, there's a Splunk killer out there, this startup's going to take this down, and Splunk just keeps moving the ball down the field. It's a nice slow cadence in terms of evolution, but they're really methodical, they're really customer-centered, and I think that's a real value for them. Yeah, I think it was, it was an interesting comment that uh, Elise Woodward made yesterday from IDC, in that Splunk's core business was built on probably the most boring internet of things application out there, which was keeping track of log files in big complex computer systems to go find out what broke when it broke. And the fact that they positioned themselves there and now are really in, in a great position for Internet of Things, it'll be a battle is to see kind of who owns the data and who owns the applications about how well they can execute there, but I think there's some great greenfield. The other thing that, that came out really heavily, and we're going to dig deeper into it, to it today, John, is their relationship with AWS. Um, as really the a core piece of their cloud strategy. I think uh, Mark said they're in nine different um, AWS regions, they're in their um, government cloud with them, so it, that seems to be a partnership that's really paying dividends, and one of the customers that they had on, you know, had a great quote, is the DOS, right? Don't own stuff. Uh, really this kind of services mentality from the apps to the infrastructure to the cloud, and I think Mark made some other great points, we'll dig into it deeper with him, that you know, their cloud offering 
is basically the same as their on-prem offering, giving customers an, a way to you know, grab some capacity, kind of take advantage of all the things that make cloud cloud for specific use cases, and then um, you know, turn it back off and you've got your on-prem. Other interesting just use cases, again, sitting at, at breakfast yesterday, uh, sitting with a bunch of people from, from universities, and there's a huge effort here on both on public service as well as, as uh, academia, talking about splunking research data um, and different ways to splunk you know, outside of the core IT. And this one guy was like, who's doing Splunk for, for core research? So I think there's a lot of greenfield opportunity and, and then as you said, it's so important that we see every place we go, the ecosystem. And we're surrounded by, like you said, yeah. big names and little names too. Had a couple of CUBE alumni walk up to me and say, hey, I left my old company and I've started a new company, check out what we're up to. So it seems to be a healthy ecosystem and that people are starting to recycle and, and start new companies well, it's our within fourth, it. Our fourth year doing dot .conf and I think this has been a great uh, evolution for me on getting to know the relationships within the company and also uh, the guests we've had have been amazing. The guests have been phenomenal. Yesterday we had George Gilbert uh, here. He had to fly back east to get ready for the Big Data NYC event. Hashtag Big Data NYC, check it out for next week. Amazon reInvent's coming up. We'll be have the cube there. But the thing that I walked away, I walked away yesterday with George Gilbert here was the fact that machine learning is a big part of the products. And the two acquisitions that they have, Metaphor and, um, um, the one, Madhu's company, really amazing uh, in, impact to Splunk. And the Internet of Things, again, I bring that up because there are huge privacy concerns, there are huge monetization concerns, and the number one thing that comes up on IoT, and I, I was just on a crowd chat this morning at 8 a.m. with IBM uh, team, was how do you monetize uh, Internet of Things? And it's the data, it's not so much monetizing the data itself, it's what the data can yield. So what Splunk is a big part of is that revolution of monetizing the insights that come from the data. And I think that, to me, is continuing to be the killer app yeah, in big data, and certainly cloud powers analytics, uh, machine learning augments a lot of that acceleration, also creates some automation. So a lot of great stuff, uh, it's an import, important concept here. Splunk's new ITSI has been phenomenal, well received here so far. What's your uh, biggest surprise, or should we just get into it? We've got another full slate, I think we had another 15 interviews on the docket, again, ton of great customers from from cloud um, security all over the place. The big uh, surprise, or I shouldn't say a surprise for me, but something that's near and dear to my heart is open data. The concept has been kind of coming up, not directly saying open, we need open data, but the successful data models out there, the companies that use data well, integrate different sources of data. And what Splunk does really well is they can ingest the data, and the success for the future companies is not to hoard the data as a competitive advantage, is to open up the data and make the data free and accessible so data can interact with each other and, and breaking down data silos will certainly be a big discussion point conversation. So if you got any thoughts on open data, bring it in. We're going to ask the guests today about machine learning and open data and these, these trends, Jeff. So my big surprise is that that topic is starting to, to rear its head now. We're going to talk more and more about open data and the more access to data, the better the insights, the better the, better the fidelity. So we're here all day. Uh, we've got a great lineup. Again, we're going to talk about cloud and security today. Stay tuned, keep watching theCUBE. We're here all day for day two coverage here in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>